good because I don't have any light here. You know, I mean, it's like I, I need my lighting department. I need right. my my makeup and <laughs> hair. I definitely need my wardrobe. So me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing my team. Oh, exactly. This is Fish's call sheet, and this is where we explore the behind the scenes workers who kind of make all of the magic of production happen. And today I'm so thrilled to have my longtime friend and boom operator, Michael Rizzolo, here on the show. Thank you for joining me, Michael. Ah, my pleasure. My pleasure. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And that was such a nice intro. <laughs> well, I, I'm so thrilled. You know, we originally worked with each other, I think we started in 1988. So I think, well, I think I came on in 89. Okay. And I started the second season. And, and, and for me, I was always amazed by, by what you do. So for people who don't know, a boom operator sits on a large contraption that has a long arm on it that has a microphone at the end. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit. Yeah. But to begin with, as a kid, it's such an amazing, different job. And you're up high and, and you have all of these things you're doing all at the same time. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit, if you're willing. Sure. But I was so amazed. You were one of the people who was just so welcoming. <laughs> it was always kind and, and joyful and playful. And, you know, 30 plus years later, you're still a pleasure <laughs> to work with every week. It's amazing how we got back together again after yeah. all the years and and it didn't seem like there were that many years except you're not a little kid anymore <laughs> yeah and i i love it because we get to share these moments and it's wonderful to get to share all of these parts of my life with you so it's it's been such a beautiful journey it's one of the reasons why i immediately wanted to reach out to you and have you on let's start with kind of the the beginning of it what's your official job title the official job title is microphone boom operator. Okay. Now, what do people think a microphone boom operator does outside of this? Uh, the short, short answer to that is point microphone, get check. Okay. <laughs> and what do you really do? What I really do is basically point microphone, get check. <laughs> As you know, like, like most of our, our jobs are all collaborative. So it's not like just I'm out there by myself following an actor around. It depends on camera and lighting and also the actor hitting marks and not being in the shot and not throwing shadows. That's all a part of it. And also the, the part that I love is learning the script and learning the actors. Somebody's going to be consistent one way and somebody's going to be the other way. You have to kind of anticipate and follow what's going on in, in the show. So you're part of the show. And that's what I love about sitcoms. You're part of the action. I've always loved that. Picture so that people can see what a boom looks yeah. like. Thank you a perspective there from Connors this last season. Perspective from the audience. And something that you touched on that for most people seems like a small thing, but is such a huge thing for us week in and week out is trying to find that line of being able to track an actor through a scene and pick up the dialogue, but not cast a, a shadow across a shot or across an actor's face that makes a shot unusable. So trying to balance that between the cameras and then, you know, occasionally we wonder maybe off our marks here and there. And You know, let me, let me say that the beauty of having an audience show is the fact that, that a laugh will carry you farther across the stage than you would normally go. And everybody's got to compensate for that kind of thing, both cameras and audio and, and, and actors. And that's just something that's kind of a surprise and, a, a good surprise when the laugh carries you, but uh, but those are things to take into consideration. They they just become like you know muscle memory kind of things. Yeah, you know, working with a live audience, you never know what you're going to get, and you never know what you're going to get take to take, and so that's kind of the beauty. Yeah, that's what I like. I mean, it just keeps you going, and then hopefully when you're done, you're done. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so now after all these years, so you know, you worked with me on Roseanne. Yes, and that was actually my first sitcom. I mean, you've done monumental shows. Like you, you have been you've been front and center for some of, of iconic television. Oh yeah, uh, it's, and that's what part of the fun was. I, I kind of uh, kind of early on jumped on the Chuck Lorre Express. The last two shows I did before Connors were The Big Bang and uh, Two and a Half Men. I mean, you know, all the all those, and I uh, kicked off a lot of the pilots that 
for his thing. And, and I mean, I've done stuff all the way through going back right after, after Roseanne, you know, we went into um, some really bad sitcoms and then some really good sitcoms. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Dharma and Gray. That was a nice one. And because a lot of the people from Roseanne kind of traveled over to there, you know, and, and I know I'm still friends with a lot of the people from the original, original shows, a lot of the, the, the showrunners and, and who are now directors and producers, we still keep in touch. Which yeah, is great through all those years. It's great to have a small community that stays in contact and, and really kind of transcends just work, but becoming friends. And we've seen each other at charity events and, and get togethers. And, yes. you know, maybe you can talk to what your schedule's like because you have a unique schedule. The technical side of production has a different schedule than, say, the actors or producers. Right. Because we're not involved with, with table reads and rehearsals, things like that. So, if a show shoots on, say, Thursday, fr Thursday and Friday, or a show shoots on Friday, we'll come in Thursday for our blocking, and we'll shoot some scenes usually on Thursday as well. Although, if you remember on Roseanne, the original, we'd come in on Thursday and just run the, run the stuff, <laughs> and then go home at, like, lunch, and then come back and shoot the whole show on Friday. That doesn't really happen anymore. <laughs> But um, so usually Thursday would be like a long day for us. And then uh, and then we'd come back a little later on Friday, having rehearsed usually most of the show, do some rehearsal, do a run through and um, and then shoot the show. And so our days would be Thursday, Friday, which means we need two shows. Right. So you usually try and get a, a Monday, Tuesday and a Thursday, Friday. Yeah. And some of these have been Tuesday, Wednesday, some are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, depending on the show, to try and balance, you know, the, the fact that you do need two shows and they have to be entirely different production companies. Different so, networks and different rules and kind of different formats a little bit. Like, different lots, different, yeah. you know. Just, yeah, coming just, to a different place half of your week and then crossing over and... You know, it's very interesting, you know, you have different weeks off and di different schedules and, and things overlap. And so it's a very interesting process. I think a lot of people outside of our business don't really know to work on a show that has a tone of, say, a, a two and a half men, two days later to work on Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Like, those are <laughs> much different, <laughs> much different shows, but it's a different group of people that, you know, you respect and there's some similarities, yes. but there's well, a lot of differences. The beauty of that was that when I was doing both those shows, uh, they're right next to each other, uh, right. you know, and, and a lot of the same crew went back and forth because one was a Monday, Tuesday, and the other one was a Thursday, Friday. A little bit different when you're doing something over at, say, Radford or Universal or Netflix, one of those places, and then having to, to come back over. It's, it's a little bit different in that, but it's also kind of, you know, sitcoms are a lot more stable than most entertainment you're usually within a certain parameter that you know you're going to be home at a certain you know before before daylight the next day yeah uh, and you're usually in one place which makes it just a great way to make a living you know and, I, and i've done all the location stuff you know on the road shows and and single camera and all that and and really sitcoms is a nice little nest I agree. People. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. It's a great way to really get to do high quality work, but still have a stable living environment because a lot of other shows, you know, single camera, you know, you have to get as many of the segments as you have for a day. You do a lot of location stuff, uh, episodics, dramas, you know, you could be shooting a lot of things out of order and you get really long days or you could be doing reshoots. A lot of run and gunning. But no, this is nice because it's also, you know, it's, it's, it's more, you're working with the same people every day too. Right. Which is nice. Hopefully. I mean, I yeah. think. <laughs> right. Every once in a while, right? But for the most part, it, it lends itself to being collaborative and fun. Yes. Yes. It's comedy. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you know, whenever anybody would go, like, like start flipping out about it, like, hey, hey, it's comedy. Well, What's and you get to play, right? You get to oh. see, you get to see the jokes. You get to see the laughter. You get to see building a new joke sometimes oh, yeah. or oh, yeah know, you get to see the magic kind of behind the curtain well it, it's one thing too i mean you get to see you know you as an actor you know like i'll read the script ahead of time and then seeing an actor do it and, and listening and the way the joke is timed and all that is is like it, it's amazing something may just lay on the page and just come alive when an actor reads it 
it's amazing the way some people can just breathe life into things. Oh, and, yeah. and every once in a while you look at a script and you go, you go, Oh man, I, I don't know if, if this person has a lot this week. And then you get there and you laugh all day long and you think to yourself, that's why they're so good at what they do. Exactly. And everybody, it, it kind of shakes out, you know, by this era or this, this time in our careers, you know, the people that can't do it kind of shake out. Right. <laughs> So, so we're all pretty good at it and it makes it fun because there's a lot less stress, you know, and a lot more fun. All right. What is the best part of your job? Best part of my job is, is what we were just talking about laughing, I laugh every day. And the beauty of that, I guess, is really that I've been on great shows or you actually laugh yeah. at the jokes and, and really that, that and the camaraderie of, you know, I have a great crew and we laugh a lot just ourselves. I love it. And there are times where I look up in between things and I see on our show, particularly with, with you and Peggy and Bob, like <laughs> you guys are laughing and I just want to be a fly on the wall and know what's going on. Oh, no, 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 you don't. <laughs> but I probably don't, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's just that it's, it's such a fun gig. You reach a certain point technically where you can just do it and you don't have to, to really stress. Although some scenes can be really complicated you know and when you've got like like seven or eight people out there and and you're trying to cover everybody and everybody's got a line and everybody's moving around which right. our show tends to do yeah we do a lot of that we do a lot of running and a lot of a lot of room to room stuff which which can be technically kind of challenging but again just the it pays off in the laughs that's what it really makes it enjoyable it really does how long have you actually been in the entertainment industry Oh my God. Well, in, in television, I've been doing this since around the middle or so of 1980 when I came to Los Angeles. Okay. I was in music before that. That was a long, long time ago. <laughs> and, and, you know, so I learned performing and things like that. But I mean, what, getting into sound out of music, which a lot of us do, that's been since the early 80s. And I did a lot of sports and game shows and everything from, you know, religious shows to Playboy to I worked with George, George Slaughter doing like, like Real People, which was an early reality show. I, again, a lot of sports, a lot of, a lot of golf and stuff like that in Hawaii, which was wonderful. Sun and Surf sometimes beats laughs. For <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But anyway, so I've done a lot. I've done everything you possibly could. And, and then I just, you know, discovering sitcoms was the absolute best. Running Boom, you know, and working with actors and, and really good writers. That, that was probably the turning point. And that's what kept me in this for such a long time. And that and luck. Oh, my gosh, we've been so lucky you know, to get the kind of shows that we got. Yeah, with the kind of people and, and to be in the environment and to be on such quality shows that had longevity as well. 12 years, I mean, is a long run for a sitcom. And I've done two of those. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I guess, I guess maybe three, because when you consider Roseanne and the Connors, I mean, you could, you could with just a, a, a couple of decades gap. In between. <laughs> is that all? <laughs> But yeah, that's carried through, and it and it's been uh, it's been a wonderful experience. And again, you know, I I've, I've pretty much been with the same crew a couple of decades now, and that makes a big difference too, because you just know everybody knows their their deal, knows what to expect. Can we talk for a moment about kind of in the sound department, kind of yeah. the jobs that fit the hierarchy, kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, well, just well, just the job. So people understand how many different people are involved. Because like on our show particular, we usually have three boom operators. Yes, which is unusual. But again, that's because we have a large cast and uh, we're on the floor as opposed to being up in the green beds, which is, is something different. And we go room to room without stopping, which is great. I mean, it, it makes for a wonderful flow, you know, and you do a whole scene that lasts a lot longer usually than, than most sitcoms. So, so we have three boom operators on the floor. Each boom operator has a pusher because we have to be mobile sometimes in out back and forth to follow the actors and some of us jump from set to set so there's six of us right on the floor which is which is big and then up in the booth our, our fearless leader uh, we have Bruce Peters is our mixer and Ron Arnold is our recordist so Bruce mixes it sends the signal to Ron who records it 
digitally because uh, everything's digital now, but it used to be a videotape. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's basically our crew. So we have about eight people on the crew, which is a fairly large sound crew. We've been really lucky to be able to, for, for oh. you guys as a group to be able to transition because you guys have done most of your shows together. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I've been with Bruce now for, for quite a while quite a while we ever since actually just after leaving Roseanne which is was in the 90s you can't ask for more than that no 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 I I did however get fired off the last season um <laughs> but everybody did right <laughs> I was like the longest lived crew member I think up until that point <laughs> I think sometimes you don't want to have that distinction sometimes you're like uh -oh. so remember they had a wall <laughs> of all of us then he went on to, 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 to bigger and better things after that, which was, which was great. But I mean, we, we went all the way into the, well into the 90s with that show. And then, uh, and then I kind of hooked up with Bruce after that. And, and we've been doing shows ever since, you know, I think Dharma and Greg and a couple of, of really gnarly little ones in between. I've watched the transition between, you know, between videotape over to film from film to digital, and now we're wholly digital, pretty much, and it's still been point microphone, get check. But just so people kind of have an idea, with one hand, you roll the boom in and out. In and out. To extend yep. back and forth, and with yep. the other hand, you're squeezing and turning and rotating to yep. both lift and oscillate the, yep. the microphone for yep. the right angle for the, to optimize. And then in the midst of all that, <laughs> all of us crazy actors are moving around yes. and you're trying to track us without going through too many lights or at the yeah. wrong time, the wrong yeah. place. And then add into, on Stay our show in particular, <laughs> yeah, and, and our show in particular where we start maybe in the kitchen and we go to the living room and then come back to the kitchen yeah. where you got to roll and get around a wall and do all there these things. There are walls there, yes. There are <laughs> There are walls that you can't go through them and doorways. And yeah. And I think it's a beautiful, it's a gift because you guys are so good. It gives us the opportunity to do something that not a lot of shows do is you have a flow that feels more realistic. Oh, I've always loved that about the show. I mean, even Roseanne had that to begin with. It was, it was a show just felt real. I mean, it wasn't precise, like locked down to certain things and, and it was, it was kind of loose Mm -hmm. in a way that gave it such life that that's part of what brought the jokes. And, uh, and you know, because people, when they're talking, you know, normal, don't, don't stop and talk. And, say, you know, and then, and then, although the joke is, is better when you're stopped sometimes, but just by and large, the scene moves, the people in the scene move. And it's wonderful. I mean, for me, it would be great if you just sat on the couch and, and told jokes. We call that preferred blocking where you don't have to go anywhere, right? Yes. <laughs> preferred for everybody. Preferred for everybody, no, no, no props, no, you know, just kind of dark soliloquy with just one <laughs> mic, you know. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Keep it simple, right? Keep it simple, but it uh, doesn't work that way. Yeah, we rarely do anything quite like that. Now, you started in music. I did. So mm -hmm. what brought you to the entertainment industry on this side from, you said, from performing and, and working in sound? Obviously, you had some knowledge. Well, I was, was transition? I was, I was actually working in a studio, well, taking classes, really, in a studio in L.A., and one of the mixers that was teaching it said, I have this gig that I can't make. And it's basically one microphone out on location uh, with this one guy, you know, just record it with this one mic. And, and I made more money. It wasn't even a full day. It was about eight hours. And I said, then I've been, then I had ever made like playing bars and records or any of that stuff. And I went, Oh, this, this is not bad. Right. Yeah. This, this could work, I, right? This could work. You find a place in all of it. Cause there's so many jobs in industry. You know, and even in the sound department, there's there's tons of jobs, different jobs. And I just eventually ended up with, with booming because I did everything else too, you know, and I was not the greatest mixer in the world. I fully didn't. <laughs> uh, you know, and there was a lot of pressure in that. And I just, I, I took to booming right away and just loved it. And, it, and it was, it's kind of a buried profession. All of you make it look so easy. And we don't, particularly on our show in particular, we don't have to do a lot of retakes because there's a lot of boom shadows. Right. And, and, that and that's, is, that's, because of, that's because of Don Morgan. 
it is it's a compliment yes. but it is also a compliment to you guys too because you keep track of because we play a little on our part as actors oh, especially on our show <laughs> and there's a lot of people on our show who play and move around and and you've given us the freedom to do that and it's a beautiful thing to be able to have that freedom to play mm -hmm. because you can trust you're going to be heard that it's going to be taken care of you you will be seen and that we don't surprisingly have to do a lot of big pickups or, or redos because of that kind of stuff. You guys are masterful at that. One of, one of the great things is, and this is with camera too, is the fact that we, we've worked with you guys enough to know what you're going to do. I mean, even when you're ad-libbing and, and moving around, I mean, you've all got certain personalities and certain things you do that we pick up on and we can kind of go with the flow of that, hopefully. And if we don't, you'll never know. <laughs> right, because it, it'll end up cut off someplace, right? Yeah, yes, as long as we're not banging into each other above your head, you know. <laughs> it's funny, we've had some great moments on the set recently, too, of, of oh, yeah. you know, you guys dipping down and playing with the kids a little, and, and, do, and you used to do that stuff with me, um, where you can engage in a quiet moment. Yes. So, you know, it's funny, the boom in some ways becomes such an extension of you. It's a puppet. Yeah. Kind of a puppet. I mean, we've got, I know you thought of it kind of that way when you guys were kids running around the set. Yeah, and I, I know like this year with John Goodman, you know, there's been a few times where he's played to you and you've played back. Oh, yeah. And it's so much fun. Oh, it is. It is. And that's, that's again, the beauty of, of, of feeling at ease with a cast. And actually everybody above the line, too, that's not going to be uptight, you know, that, hey, get that boom out of the shot. I'm, you know, it's a lot easier when everybody is on the same page so to speak in that sense you know we all we all respect one another and there's always lines you could cross but we don't you know we don't cross them and, and these lines are a lot farther <laughs> right farther away i mean you're not going to play around in a, in a really touching scene in a heartfelt you know, moment or heartfelt moment or you know you're not going to bring the boom down in that <laughs> Not, not normally, but for your guys' scripts, you guys break it down basically section by section, kind of line by line, who's going to cover what area and who's right. going to cover specific people. And right. you bounce back and forth between each other. Oh, uh, well, yeah, we break it down pretty much physically to cover the room or wherever we're going. And we have to give the, our numbers to the mixer. So Bruce opens the right microphone at the right time because they don't just, you know, throw everything up at once so that that he can mix actually mix the show and again sometimes sometimes things get a little a little hectic and we'll have to change something kind of on the fly and usually because we all kind of know what's going on everyone picks up on it and again, you guys are so good too of we change a lot of lines yeah you know, not, not quite as much as the old days but we, oh. we change lines and to be able to shift the plan at a yeah. moment's notice yeah you go here you go there you go there you know, we're all in headsets. We'll keep each other informed. And we're also listening to you guys as you're working it out. And the, the other beauty is the directors that we've had, I've been able to just lean down and go, hey, who's going to be, you know, who's now saying that line or where, where's that coming from? You know, and we'll, we'll have it set by the time you guys are ready to go. And it's amazing because we never wait because you guys aren't prepared. You guys are on the roll and rolling with us. And then... <laughs> To, to know when to turn what mic and all these things as they change rapidly. I mean, it's really a beautiful thing of the whole sound department works so well it, together. It, it, it's, it's so collaborative. And again, like I say, you know, just we, we collaborate between ourselves and also camera and lighting. I mean, because all those guys have to know what's going on and they're so on top of it. You know, because if you guys change a line or somebody else says the same line, I mean, camera's got to know too. So everything's got to be covered. So it's not just us. I mean, it's everybody on the crew that, that picks up on this. And it's just, it's basically just paying attention. Yeah, it's, it's the art, right? It's the art of, of being right. engaged and being involved and being collaborative. And doing all of that while some guy with a microphone is, is behind you with the audience jazzing, you know, making them shout and, and scream and... <laughs> while you're trying to get all this done. That's, that's kind of a fun part. <laughs> On your way into this business, yeah. what was your dream coming in? Did you think it, this was something you were gonna just try and feel out or you thought you'd try it for a little while? Absolutely, because it gave me so much free time. Right. It was, 
you know, because you, you, you only work a few days a week or, and I got to travel when I first started in this business, I, I went all over the place. And, and, you know, one day I'd be, I'd, I had two bags, I'd have a cold weather bag and a, and a warm weather bag. And I thought that was just really cool because I was young and, and why not? And then later down the line, it was like, okay, well, you know, booming is great because sitcoms are pretty contained. And I know that I'm going to have, you know, weekends off all the time. And I know that I'm going to have summers off almost all the time. And we'll try this out. We'll keep, keep going for a while. And then pretty soon it's like 30 years, what? 40 years, what? Um, that's kind of how it happens. But I mean, it, it, it kind of happens the same way for everybody, for actors. And, you know, we'll yeah. give it a shot. I mean, if you get some success, you're going, oh, yeah, this isn't too bad. I, I, yeah. <laughs> where do I sign up for more? Yeah, where do I get some more? And, and it's like, and, and again, I've been lucky in the fact that I've kind of, I've had a crew for a long time and we've all just gone on from one show to the other. And there have been very little downtime except for, you know, strike years and, and things like that, which, right. That happens to everybody. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, sh it's one of the greatest dodges. you <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm so happy that we have had you this whole time. I, I've been so oh. blessed to get to have you be part of my life and my journey in that way. Oh, right back at you, Michael. And it, it was so nice to actually, to reconnect with you at those charity events. Yeah you know, that we would both go to. And I go, oh my God, you got, you know, I mean, you went from little, little Michael to, <laughs> that was wonderful. That, that really brought back a lot of memories. And, and, you know, I don't have a whole lot of pictures from those days, but I have, I, I think I, I, you didn't have the, all the crew shots. I think I gave you yes. that we were all together for, for those, those many years. A lot of the people on our crew now were back then and they kind of just, followed along too. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a great journey over the course of, of your career. What are some of the moments that you couldn't wait to share with your loved ones? So you couldn't wait to go home and say, I, I can't believe this happened or this person was there today, or oh, I got to work with this person. You know, I, 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 I hesitate to name drop like certain people, but I, but I mean, there have been people that, you know, you grow up not in, or you grow with, not even just when you're young, but, but people like John Cleese, where you get to spend some time talking about stuff or, or Billy Crystal or, you know, a lot of the people that we've had over the, over the past few years and, and done a few things after work and stuff with some of the actors that have been really cool. There are a few times I've come home, uh, well, for my, my daughter, when she was growing up, I worked with Barney on a show. <laughs> Me too. And pictures and wasn't that great? I mean, it was like I was so nice. The voice of Barney called my daughter on the phone. You know, said, "Hey, I'm here with your with your dad." And <laughs> that that was a great moment. That was really a cool moment. I did that with my little brother because oh. it was it for him, right? And that okay. was that was the show at the time. And yeah, I totally remember. And and you find yourself in these places, and and they're like, "Oh, your your brother really loves the show." Let me call him. And you're like, really? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then you're really, you know, you come home and you're much cooler than you normally are because oh, gosh, said, yeah. right? you, you did something that no one could have requested. Oh, offhand. Yeah. And you, you do not hesitate to bring that up in later <laughs> when you're no longer as cool as you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, there, you know, there's always moments like that, that, that come out of, out of nowhere. That's the fun part of being, in, in this business, you never know who's going to show up. I mean, we did a, we did a show on Big Bang with Bob Newhart. Yeah. And, and Tim Conway walked on the stage. And it was like, how much funnier could this get? Amazingly funny, just the two of those guys riffing. And, and nobody planned it. It just kind of happened. Oh, it, and the beautiful accidents, right? Those are the things oh. we try to catch oh. so often because they end up being some of the best moments. Yes, yes. And then there's always the ones that you just missed. <laughs> Guess who was just here? You know? Yeah, or somebody calls you, one of your friends who's on another stage says, you got to come over here. You're like, I'm in the middle of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to come here. No, no, really, it's the Beatles. I, <laughs> you're gone. What's something about you that I might not know? Uh, well, you know I'm hilarious already. A skill, a thing, something that you're interested in that not everybody knows. Well, not everybody knew that I was into music before 
kind of a few pictures like surfaced online and they're going is that you with the fro and the the actually a lot of people probably wouldn't know that i was once an art dealer oh um, really i i ran a couple of galleries um beverly hills and and um and uh westwood wow uh, and i i collected an awful lot of art during that time do you have a style that you love i love pretty much everything yeah. i mean i go from one thing to another i i'm i'm more into into some of the abstract stuff now but i mean i've dealt like everyone from Peter Max to uh, Andy Warhol to, you know, I mean, it was, it was a pretty cool, cool career, kind of side career because okay. I could, as I was doing that, and that's what actually brought me to LA is I was up in the Bay Area. I had a gallery up there and uh, I got offered a job down here and I went, oh, perfect for a musician. I mean, I, I can come to LA and I can have a job. Right. Uh, and that's actually what brought me to LA was was running an art gallery in uh, in Beverly Hills. Um, that's amazing. That's weird. <laughs> and then you know you've just spent all these decades bumming with you know those of us on on sound stages. Yeah, yeah, but that's <laughs> that's kind of art too, you know. It, 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 do I really want to bring another thing? Okay, I graduated as an English major. Okay. So quite naturally, I moved right into an art gallery, <laughs> right into sound. So. Right, because you know it's a direct line. You know, English major, you know, to art to sound. It's it's like billiards. I mean, it's you bounce off this wall and you bounce into the next wall. Well, I think that's the beauty of of all of us in so many ways. We have so many different interests. Well, you know, and, and again, if you look at the people on the crew, you know, all these people have come from other other places. I mean, most of them, I, I'd say like, you know, those that weren't like kind of in a family kind of tradition where my, you know, my father did this, so I'm doing that, that kind of a thing. But the rest of us just kind of fell into this. Right. And, and you'd be surprised how many guitarists and singers and, and, um, and English majors and artists are out there doing, doing these jobs. Cause it's all not, it, this is not who we are. It's what we do. Right. It's a different side of art. So you're participating oh, yeah. in making art. So it's, it's a bunch of creative people who come together collaboratively and then you find kind of a niche or a place. It leads you to the next place. Exactly. Exactly. And it does. And I, and I think if you look at, even if you look at the writers and producers, I mean, they've all come from, from those kinds of backgrounds too. You know, I mean, look at our guys. I, <laughs> It's a very, it's a very different kind of eclectic group. Well, because you bring experience from other things, you bring it to this. And again, once you've got the, the, the technical side down, or you're always learning in that too, but I mean, once you, you know, achieved a certain proficiency in that, you, you bring all this other stuff to it. You bring your art side. I mean, camera, I mean, they have, framing is just wonderful when you can do it on the fly. What inspires you? Actually, uh, the enthusiasm. But, I mean, you get a lot of inspiration from, I, I, I'm not trying to suck up or anything, but from actors who are still giving a, their 100% out there and from the writers who are trying to get something that, that's their vision. And again, it doesn't, it, it's a sitcom, so it's, it's not brain surgery or anything like that. But still, you're trying for the best product you can have. And which is laughs, and and that makes it much more fun. But I mean, you can take inspiration from like nailing something that that was really hard. Again, going back to, I, I'm actually getting paid for this, so <laughs> you know, so I'm going to do it, and 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 that does make a difference. I mean, you know, I, this is kind of it's fun stuff. You know? yeah, it's part of the adventure too. I think there's something about as a boom operator on our show where you're on a mobile boom. Mm -hmm versus being in a stationary place like on other projects, right? Mm -hmm. Or walking above. It's a, lot, it's a different perspective, it is. They are, each have their own little, uh, little peccadilloes. <laughs> yeah, if you're standing in one place with a, with a fish pole for hours on end and, 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 you know, and it's a 10 minute scene and then the director says, okay, right away again. You're going, oh, please, please, let me put this down for one second, you know, head balancing. And, you know, I, uh, mine is, is pretty nice because it's, it, it can be physical, but it's not exhausting that way. 
mentally it's a little exhausting, actually more exciting, I think, than, than standing there doing film, you know, with a fishbowl where you're doing the same thing, three different takes. Being a boom operator on a sitcom, what are the hardest transitions that you have to cover? Well, the hardest ones are usually uh, kind of upstage, downstage things as opposed to left and right. You know, where somebody's like, there, there are physical barriers that you have to kind of get through. And, and that's where, where it's hard with lighting, too, when you're going up and down as opposed to back and forth. Because you're working on different planes as well. You know, your, your depth perception is going from, say, 20 feet away to 25 feet away and moving at the same time. And then there's, there's a few things you have to coordinate with your, with your boom pusher as to when you go in and when you pull back out. And cameras are doing the same thing. So you've got a camera in front of you and suddenly somebody goes upstage. You have to kind of find a niche between those four cameras in front of you when somebody's going farther than your boom can reach. So that, that could be a little difficult. But luckily, you know, you have a good boom pusher and they're paying attention and they'll, they'll help you out. You know, it, it's, it's not easy going from room to room when you've got a scene that doesn't stop and you've got splits in both rooms. Right. We have three booms, and so I'm, I'm the center boom, so I go back and forth like the, the living room kitchen set. I have right. to go back and forth as you yeah. walk through. And I think for people they don't maybe know is like your, your boom is out here reaching into the kitchen per se, right? right? Yeah. And then to get to the living room, not only do you have to pull in, but you have to get back with your boom pusher, get yeah. around the wall, and then come in yeah, the other side and do all of that without creating a big boom shadow or <laughs> right. breaking somebody's right. light or, or missing anybody, right? Missing anybody, yeah, yeah. And so you've got you've got a scene with a split in the kitchen, you got a scene with a split in the living room, and they don't want to stop because the joke travels through. And so you're racing along behind. So are cameras, but cameras they'll move a couple over right. to catch it, and then we have a boom in there to try and catch too. But that's that's part of the fun though too. Especially when you get, and I don't know if we'll ever have this again, but, but you get a crowded floor where people are kind of watching, you know, and crying, oh, that's kind of neat. And then all of a sudden you got to go. Yeah, got to go. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> again, I don't know if that's going to be, you know, our future here is, is kind of up in the air as far as what we're going to do. But, but those, are, those are some of the hazards. Up top, you know, it's interesting too, because you're there you have lights physically in the way, you know, so you're, you're above and you're coming down through the lights and moving across and up and down. And that can be a pain too. And as you're moving, right, yeah. you're trying to duck that mic between. Yeah. And, and you got to get between, but you also got to make sure you're not too close so you're not getting hums and other things. Well, that and you're not whacking it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to shake everything. Shaking everything or knocking the flags off or, uh, or throwing a big giant shadow across the, uh, across the set. Uh, okay, now you said watching actors you kind of get a rhythm for people right yes yes so can you give me an example of some people's rhythms like people that you've worked with over long periods of time somebody who like what are their styles or rhythms oh well you know big bang i did for a long time i mean you get to know the actors you get to know and and, and let's take johnny galecki who is who we all know and and who's been friends with us for a long long time it's just certain beats you know that they're going to take most of the actors I've ever worked with are very professional. So you know they're going to try and be as consistent as possible. And Johnny's no exception to that. I mean, he'll give you a take. But sometimes you want to try something different. And it's just, you, you just kind of have to feel it, the rhythm of somebody's cadence and, and the character. It's not necessarily the actor. It's the actor playing the character. Right. And for a certain character, well, John Goodman. John's character will take long pauses and you just see the emotion play across his face. You know, so you're waiting for the next line. You know, he's not, he's not up on the line. He's just taking that beat and he'll do that a lot. And you get into that rhythm with him. And then when he and Lori are doing a scene together, I mean, you know, that's like acting class. Yeah. And they will play off of each other. And Lori kind of goes. Well, it's, it's interesting because she'll go big. She'll go big. And then she'll come back down yeah. real low. And there's times you can almost feel like she's ramping up. 
Yeah. She has like, I, for me, I, you know, I see there's watching her so closely. There's like moments where the character is staggering and then goes huge. Yes. Yes. And has to come back I, down. You've got to be prepared for that. And so you, you, you know, just for sound wise, you have to be prepared because you know, and, and same thing with John, you know, they're going to be loud at that point. And you don't want to ruin it by having the mic so close that it, it distorts. Right. So you have to be prepared for that yell or that, that scream and then be prepared to come right back down because she's going to, she's going to go quiet the next. Yes. Right. And those, those are, I mean, that's dynamics and it's, and it's, it's really wonderful to play. And I, I, you know, John and Lori together, it's such a, a ballet almost. It's so connected when they're on that you, you have to play along. And it's, it's very symphonic in that, that there's going to be going to be musical dynamics between the two of them as well as physical because both of them can get physical <laughs> and that's what makes it so much fun. And so real is there's so much dynamic in their acting and, and you have to try not to get caught up just in going, wow, this guy's good. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Well, you're watching, but you're a participant, right? And then trying to get in so that you can hear it or get away so that they can go huge doing it all real time. And then they make you laugh. Yeah. On top of that. And you're, you know, tears and of, of laughter and you're, you're trying to maintain. And then there's time. I mean, I, I, it, it's not perfect all the time because you'll be into it so much and you'll go, Wow, that was great. How come I can't hear that other act? Oh, because I'm supposed to be over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, now, what's one of the strangest things you've had or you've seen on a set without getting anybody in trouble? Well, I've worked with tons of animals, you know, from gigantic lizards to hawks to sea lions. I remember at one, oh, okay, I've got two things. One animal one. We were doing a scene with a horse and we were up in the green beds. And the horse wasn't performing. The trainer said, the horse wants to see the guys in the green bed. The horse wants, because he doesn't know where the microphone's coming from. <laughs> so it's like, so they had to light us up so the horse could look and see where we were. Um, Did that help? I, I'm not the <laughs> horse, you know. I, don't, I didn't have to mic the horse. <laughs> And the other thing is we're always, we're always, and I, I don't mean to be put any department down, but, but there's always, you always take a chance with special effects. Right. When something's going to, going to happen. And I remember one scene we had on another show, I won't mention the show, but, but it was a, a scene where a hot tub was supposed to overflow over the top of a fence into another yard. Okay. And we were in one yard and the hot tub was on the other side. So they were just going to pump suds over the top of the, of the wall and have it come down and start filling up this other set. And we're up in the green beds looking down. So we see the whole setup with the pumps and everything. And they start pumping, and it's not coming enough over the top. So they have more, 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 more. So they're pumping like the, the, this huge, huge amount of, of suds. Well, it was going between the walls. And it was coming around the back of the set. And the people that were yelling, there was this giant suds wave. Coming to them. Behind the people that were yelling more and more. And, and, you know, we were trying to go, guys. <laughs> But we were laughing so hard that, that they, they didn't notice until it started flapping at their feet. And then they had to clean the entire set up. But it would, and, then, and it was just a trickle on the other side. But it was because the hose got, got caught between the two sets because there's two walls. That was fun. That was funny. We've had a few funny, funny moments like that. Up. Okay, for people who don't know, can you describe the green beds and how that kind of works? Oh, sure. It's, it's like a, a set of wooden, like a platform all the way across that's hung by chains to the very top of the grid. So we're about 13 to 15 feet above the stage and all the booms are mounted on top. And then we look down. It's a very interesting place to work because you're above everything and it's kind of dark. And I've been up there during two earthquakes. Oh, wow. Which were not, were not fun. 
not fun at all. <laughs> yeah, being on a soundstage during an earthquake is never fun. No, there's no. so many things no. rolling and shaking. and oh, It's been crazy. But I mean, it, it, I spent a lot of time up there. It is its own world. And I, I, I actually prefer being on the floor now because you're connected with everybody. Now, what kind of shows, for people who, mm -hmm. who may not have seen a set a lot, what kind of shows usually use green bed versus being more on the floor? Well, it were film shows mostly to start out with. And, and we did that for, um, well, Big Bang and uh, Two and a Half Men were all shows up in the green beds. Shows down on the floor were like Roseanne, videotape sitcoms, all the, all the, um, all the, the Disney kid shows, things like that. Those are all on the floor. It's very expensive to put up green beds. And usually it's, it's because you've got a lot of sets and, uh, and a lot of people in sets. Uh, and also you don't want the booms in front of or on the stage. You could, you could have like not a big, a big camera aisle to get everything in. Again, though, it's nice to be on the floor just because you're really physically connected to the show. Right, and in, in with everyone. In right? with everybody, and, and sometimes it gets a little tense down there. It is funny, too, for me, because when you work in the green beds, mm -hmm. it's fun from this one standpoint is people almost forget you're up there oh, sometimes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and people will do things, and you're like, oh, that's odd, right? Like, and, and you're just like, <laughs> or they don't realize, or every once in a while they look up and go, oh, and yeah. like, yeah, did I say that? Yeah, yeah. I've had that happen a few times. And also because a lot of times they're behind something and we're above that and looking down and they'll do things there and we'll go, um, still here. Yeah, right. <laughs> we can see you, right? I like, can see right. you and hear you, yes. I, yeah. So yeah, that's been, that's been kind of fun and I can't really comment anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's probably good that we don't. We won't go too far down that road. <laughs> okay, so... If you could go back to any project that you did, knowing what you know now, is there any project that you wish you could go back with your skills now or do something different on? Because all of it's been learning, a learning experience, definitely. I think in, in the, I, I would definitely go back to being a, uh, to when I was, I was playing music and go, oh, now I know what I was supposed to do during that. Um, but I would say, Skill level wise, yeah, I wish I could go back and, and, and be better at some of the early stuff that I did. But that was all kind of a learning process. You know, when you try and, and, and learn from, from your failures, naturally I, I haven't had any failures, but you know, it, no, it, it really, because, because a lot of stuff that, that you've done could have been done better, but at the time it probably couldn't. Right. I, I, I'm a big firm believer in you're supposed to learn these lessons. Yes. So I, and I, I love some of the mistakes are what teach you and make you what you become later. Oh, yeah. So, because so you go, I'm, you. I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is not the way to handle that. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, I can do that all over again. Okay. Oh, I'm going to yeah. do that different next time. Uh, if, I, if there is a next time. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure there isn't one. Right, right, right. If that situation ever comes up again, I know what not to do. So right. It's me only like a million choices of other things I can screw up on. Right. right, I can mess it up a lot of other ways, but I won't mess it up that way again. No, no, and you do learn from that, and everybody has that. But I just want to say before we get into the, the fast stuff here and all that, that it's been lovely. It's been so sweet and so nice to talk to you, and I hope we can do it again. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I am so honored. All right, you ready? Here, here's the big rundown. I, I, these are the questions I ask everybody. So okay, first now, response, have fun. What's the first thing you look for on a call sheet? First, keep in mind that I've already got my call time. First thing I look for on a call sheet is what's going to be my out time. What, <laughs> what generally am I looking at here? Am I looking at getting home before traffic? Am I looking at getting home you know, after dinner? Or what's going to be my out time? What are we, what are we doing today? Right. Perfect. That's, yeah. that's me too. It's not the call time that I look at. Most no. people say call time. I'm always like, what are we doing? And then uh, what, what's the day look like it is. <laughs> <laughs> also that comes families too, you know, oh, yeah. Because, oh, yeah. because you raised a family doing this and, you know, wanting to have an idea of how you can schedule time. Do you ever find that what you're always at, what time are you coming home? 
Yes. I don't <laughs> know. It's been 30 years. You know? I know. <laughs> well, and I always go, well, here's what, this is my always, my satellite. Here's what it's posted as. <laughs> right. Right. And now with modern technology, I always send a picture. Like I'm not making it up. So I'm when I'm sure. two hours after that, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't me, right? I, I, I gave you the best information I had. Don't worry. All right, what is the last thing you want to see on a call sheet? That we're going on location. Or that or, or even worse, that it's a night location. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> night location means night long night. Means long night. One of the things I really take from, from Chuck Lorre is that we're indoor cats. I, I'm definitely an indoor cat. I, I I don't like it out there in the elements. Yeah, I, I, I hear that. What's your favorite thing to see at craft service? Probably what gets me going is, is some kind of dessert thing, like ice cream or a good birthday cake. Now, on the flip side, what do you hate to see at craft service? Well, I can't, I can't handle bell peppers. And so uh, there have been a few craft service things where the entire meal is based on bell pepper in everything. And I just go... All right, guys, where's, you know, give me a hot dog. Um, <laughs> I did not know this after all these years. All now these I years. know if I Let's see get, it. That bell pepper cake home. <laughs> all right, after all these years, Michael, how do you define success? You know, this, this is a hard one to, to actually put into words because what comes up with is, is being satisfied, mm -hmm. you know, that you did that did what you did nobody got hurt and you know it's it's not like i mean some people say i want to be the best at what i what i well you know the best boom operator is is not that much better than 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 the worst boom operator <laughs> i mean it's like you know as far as as far as as being good at your profession i think i think it's it's that you were satisfied with what you did and you you know you made a good living you met a lot of really neat people and, and didn't try to screw with anybody. You know, and I think, I think that's pretty much success is, is being there. I like it. I like your definition. So now, <laughs> now I have to ask you the follow-up question is, based on your definition of success, how are you doing? How I think, measure up? I, look, I'm, 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 seven decades into this now and i'm still alive and and i don't think people hate me <laughs> I think no I, we love we we more than don't hate you we love you <laughs> see i mean how much more can you really ask about that i'm i'm pretty satisfied with where i am i i never was eric clapton but you know i'm me and i've had a, a good run you know met a lot of great people a lot of, had a lot of fun way way too much fun for living in these in these times you know so i'd have to say i'm i'm pretty 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 good with it i should i go now <laughs> no i think you should you should stick around and you should do a lot more and uh, you should you should enjoy it all the way through because i enjoy working with you every single week i look forward uh, to seeing you every week when you guys come in and it has been my pleasure and i i'll tell you for me I love your definition of success. Uh, your wisdom has been enlightening in my life. Uh -huh. And I think that you are doing an exceptionally good job. I love talking about your daughter and sharing family <laughs> yes. and, and all of it, laughing, joking, playing, stepping up to the moment. So I cheer for you and I celebrate you and I respect you as always. Wow. And I think you're doing a great job. And back at you guys. You and know. don't plan on retiring anytime soon. I want you busy and I want you around me as long as I can. <laughs> I'll pick on you as long as I can. As long as I can, because it, it, it was a, it's a great business. It is a great business. business. And, um, and I don't think you can find this in, in really any other, any other profession. That's the thing for me. I've always been so thankful. You know, I think I learned really early on and I was blessed with being given the wisdom by people like you that, how lucky we are to get to do something great, how lucky we are to get to do something that we enjoy what we do and that it's different every day and that yeah. it's an adventure and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Not that there won't be bumps, but it's beautiful. Well, yeah. In the I mean, looking back and I can look way, way back. <laughs> uh, it's been a great ride. All right. What's the one thing you want on every set? 
cool people, good people. It's, it's that's that's the main thing. Oh, uh, you are definitely that for me. <laughs> All right, now what is the one thing that you would eliminate on every set? Egos. Me too. Me yeah. too. I mean, yeah. And and that doesn't show up often. But let's yeah. make that, that pretty clear. That is really a handful of, of times because everybody, if you've been in it long enough, 99% of the people are team players. And, you know, we all, we're all confident, but it's it's all about – being good to work with. I tell that to my daughter all the time too. It's like, it, it's how you are to work with. Right. Not how much talent you have or what kind of pool you have, that kind of thing. You know, if you're on a set, it's, it, people want to work with you, you'll work. Yeah. And I think that's one of those things I, I tell my kids too. And, and you and I have talked about this is there's something about being a quality individual and being easy to work with no matter how talented you are, if you're ego filled or you're negative or you're hard to deal with at some point, people get tired, even with your talent or your gifts. Yep. Yep. It's true. What is the <laughs> best gift you've ever gotten from a project? Oh my God. You know, I have to tell you the big bang cast gave us such incredible gifts every year. You know, they get when they got their raises and all that. I mean, it was like, and, and they were really thoughtful and appreciative things like iPads and, and televisions. And I think probably one of the, one of the coolest things I ever got, and, and I wasn't really into it, but it was just a cool, cool gift was a complete like nineties game console where, where you had two players, you could sit down, it was a cocktail table and they got us this as just kind of an off the wall thing. Awesome. Uh, it was, it was just an awesome gift. And it was like, it was well thought out because because one of the episodes had dealt with this. So I think it was probably Kaylee that came up with it, <laughs> but, uh, but it was, um, it was just, that's probably the most, the most outlandish thing. How do you want the people who worked with you to remember you? I'd like them to remember me. <laughs> you know? Probably saw that part we got. Most- you know, as opposed to being, uh, what was that guy we used to work with? You know, that 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 uh, he hasn't been here in a while. I can't remember it. Um, no, I think just just again what we were talking about that that it was it was cool to work with him. He made me laugh, and um, and uh, he didn't throw me under the bus. <laughs> you know that that I think I think the main thing is just just being well remembered you know, well-liked that in that sense. Um, but you are. That, that part, no, no problem there. Mission there, accomplished. There's time. <laughs> <laughs> well, me too. I got time. <laughs> you got time. You got time. <laughs> what is the legacy that you want your loved ones to take from your life? Oh, goodness. Well, again, it's, it's probably kind of walked lightly on the earth. You know, you yeah. didn't it left it a better place or at least not a worse place than than when I came in. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Michael, that's a that's a beautiful sentiment. I mean um, I see, and and sometimes people go, Oh, you make wise statements. I'm like, No, really, I'm just parroting all the smart people I've met before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading it right now. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing your talent with me and your gift and your kindness week in and week out for the better part of my entire life. Uh, and, and stay at it because I have a, a, a lot of things I'd like to do and I'd like you to be there to enjoy that journey. Michael, it's been a pleasure. It really has. And it always is. with You You know, you, you brighten up the stage. You're one of those guys that, that comes on the stage and greets everybody. And I, I, as you walk away, everybody smiles. You know, that's one of the nice things about that is that this, that, you know, you, you do lighten up the place when you walk in. Oh, then I'm, then I'm learning from you and doing it the right way. (laughs) I just want to know that you're happy and that you're doing what you want to do. And you, this is such a great project for you because you're, you, you draw people out. Which, which is really nice. And, and as far as what's happening in your life, I, I, you know, I hope that, that everything's, that you're handling all the stuff that's going on and that you remain who you are. 
And I think you have. I mean, you're really the same guy I met as a little kid, you know, obviously older and, and grown in wisdom. And, and, but I mean, you're that open kid. That well, I try to maintain, I just want to be authentic. Um, and I try to maintain that. I am happy. And actually, to be honest, Michael, this is one of the things that makes me really happy is I'm going to walk away from this interview. And for the next two days, I'll be laughing and smiling about this time that we shared and how much I enjoyed this experience and getting to share and celebrate you. This is a project that is so close to my heart because I believe in sharing and respecting all the people who have helped you along the way. I agree. Totally agree with that. That's wonderful. And, and, and I was just thinking as you were saying that, that, that this, is, this is a really good project for you because you've been around this for a long time. You know, I mean, you, you grew up in this business and around crew and around sets, and yet you're an actor, so you, you can present. I'm uniquely aware of how much I miss you guys. I think, you know, that was one of the gifts I got towards the end of the show was I knew how much I was going to miss everybody and how important you all were to me. Wow. But to add to that over the years to really have been gifted with the chance to share more time with you and get to know you through different phases of my life. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? I mean, that, that, it's wonderful. It, it's kind of coming back around, you know? I mean, it, it really, for me especially, since it was the first sitcom I ever really did, um, to come around at the, kind of the end of my career and, and be with a lot of the same people that I started <laughs> with. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's a gift. It is a gift. Um, I remember, remind me of that, that it's a gift when we're, you know, when we're out on location at night. <laughs> okay. When, when, when they take the uh, indoor cats outside yes, for, yes. for a night shoot, right? <laughs> yes. And it's raining and it's cold and, and I'm holding a fishbowl for a half an hour. <laughs> I will. I promise. I mean, what a wonderful gift this is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael. Oh, thank you, Michael. It was really a pleasure. If you'd like to be updated on Fish's call sheet, go ahead and subscribe or hit the bell below so you know right when we update new information.